Today I have a huge special for you and I'm sharing a complete chart pattern trading course here on YouTube for you. Everything that I have learned being a trader for more than 14 years is compiled in this video. We will go very deep into chart patterns. I have included practical chart pattern strategies with entries. And by the end of this video, you will be a complete master of chart pattern reading and trading. Also, all the timestamps are in the video description. If you want to jump ahead or maybe watch some parts again, make sure to check the video description. And also, I've included some very helpful links below in the video description. And now let's get going. Here is a brief overview of what to expect in this video. First, we're going to answer the question, why should you even learn price action patterns? Is it worth it? And what do you expect? Second, this is going to be a huge aha moment because we're going to take a look at how pattern trading actually makes money and why in pattern trading there's actually the biggest money to be made as a trader. This is going to be really interesting. Then we're going to take a look at the eight best price action and chart patterns. I'm going here very in depth. We're going to take a look at different examples, price action and everything that you need to know to master the best patterns. Then we're going to take a look at fractal patterns so that we can understand how the different time frames work together and what the best time frame is. And at the end, I have included six ready to use advanced price action and pattern strategies for you. And here I've included a lot of trade studies, step by step chart analysis and everything that you need to know with entries, exits, stops, targets and all the important details. In trading, when we look at patterns, we can generally distinguish between three types. First is the trend connectors. So a pattern can occur within a trend and then connect different trending stages. It can be a trend reversal. So a pattern can occur at the end of an uptrend and then lead to a downtrend. Or there are also so-called fail patterns, a pattern that is very nicely developed on your charts. It gets triggered, it fails, and then it can become a signal in and of itself. In this video, we're going to focus mostly on the first two parts. But if you're interested in a video about fail patterns, let me know in the video description. I said it in the beginning. Patterns show you where to make money. And this is really, really a big eye opener for a lot of traders because patterns are connectors. And once I realized this concept, my view on chart patterns changed significantly. So those are the most important or most common types of chart patterns and how they connect the different phases on our charts. So sometimes we are in a downtrend, then we have a sideways pattern and then the breakout out of that pattern leads to uh, the continuation of the ongoing downtrend. In this case, we are talking about a trend connector pattern. Here we are having an uptrend. The market is moving higher. It gives us any type of pattern and we will see that those types of patterns can be flags, head and shoulders, sideways ranges or any other uh, chart pattern that we're going to discover in this video. And then on the breakout, the market continues or it can also be a trend reversal. The market is in an uptrend. The pattern is then marking the end of this previous trend. And once the market is triggering and breaking out of this pattern, the trend is reversed. So usually what we're going to see in this video is that the patterns are falling in one of those three categories. And you can ask yourself, where does price move? Where can you make money? When we look at a chart, Everybody or most traders know that most of the time the price on your charts is ranging and within a range when the market is moving sideways, it is moving within a very well defined corridor. There is not a lot of money that you can make because you can see the potential of the price going up or down and the distance how much the price is going up and down is very, very short and very small. So naturally, obviously, compare this area with what is happening here previously or afterwards here before and afterwards in a short period of time the market has moved when we look at points for example quite a lot significant distances here as well whereas here for a long time the market moved up a little bit down a little bit then it hit some roadblocks in the middle of the range there's a lot of volatility so ideally it is not so nice and it's not very lucrative to trade within a pattern. However, it is very lucrative to trade outside of such a pattern. And this is where pattern trading later will help us to understand how to catch those times and those moves where the market moves a lot in a short amount of time, because that's 
obviously where we want to participate as a trader. We want to get into a trade, then we want to see that the market quickly moves into our favor, then we want to close the trade without staying in the trade too long for a profit and wait for the next opportunity. And this is how pattern trading or wet pattern trading comes in. Here you can see the market is giving us a sideways range. And for a long time, the market didn't do much. It moved up and down a little bit. But once the market broke out of this pattern, within a short period of time, the market moved a lot before it entered the next pattern. Here, by the way, is another pattern, a short term wedge or pennant, as we will see in a moment. Then the breakout led to a strong move. We have a larger, broader pattern where the market stayed within this pattern for a while. Here, by the way, we have a failed pattern. And then on the breakout out of this broader pattern, the market rallied higher, moved sideways for a long time, broke out, and now we're looking at a potential trend. Again, the very important takeaway when you look at any price chart is that the market always goes between trending phases and pattern phases. So we have sideways ranges, which are patterns or can be patterns, and we have trending phases. And the patterns really help us to understand that we want to be aware of a pattern, but we don't want to trade it. We want to wait until the market is getting out of the pattern because that's where the market moves a lot in a short amount of time. And this is what this video is going to help you among a few other things as well. Obviously, there's much, much more to pattern trading, but this point really shows you why it's so important to learn about patterns, because when you know about patterns, you know when you don't want to trade. Also, the exit or the trigger of a pattern can then help you to find the situations where the market is potentially moving a lot in a short amount of time. And then there are a few different ways on how do we actually get into a trade. It's not only about a breakout. There are potential liquidity runs, which I will cover later as well in this video. And there are very interesting trading strategies that we can build around those patterns. Now, before we get into the actual patterns, let's talk about how do we find patterns and what are patterns made up of. And we can generally distinguish between two types of patterns. First of all, we have a trend line based pattern and we have a horizontal based pattern. So a trend line based pattern uses a, um, a trend line. It is generally a diagonal line and it is something like what we have seen here. For example, this is a channel and the levels that we are using to define the price action within this pattern is not completely horizontal, but it's diagonal. This is one type of pattern. And we have a horizontal based pattern, which generally uses completely um, flat or horizontal levels like what we are seeing here or here. And what is very important is for a diagonal pattern, we need three touch points because if you're using a trend line, you can always connect any two random price points. You can do it on your charts and try it out. If you only use a pattern with two part touch points and a trend line, you can make it up however you want because with a trend line, you have so many opportunities, but only if you have three touch points that align on the same trend line, then you're looking at a valid pattern. For example, here we have one, two, three, four, five. This is not random anymore. If we only would have had two, that would be too random. But if we have three, four, five, that is then showing us a valid pattern here as well. We have one, two, three, four touch points. So we are definitely looking at a valid pattern. Why is it so important? It is important because if we later want to trade breakouts, pullbacks or liquidity runs, it is important that the area that we are defining for those pullbacks, those breakouts, those retests, it's actually a level on your charts that the market is caring about. We don't want to trade a breakout through a completely random level on our charts because the probability that this is actually leading to something meaningful is much, much lower. However, on the other hand, if we have a valid pattern, a very well respected breakout level, you can be sure that a lot of other traders are looking at it as well because the tools are already showing you that this is not a random point anymore on your charts. And then finding a profitable trade around that can be much, much easier and it is more objective as well. Now let's continue and we're looking at the eight best price action patterns. And as, as you will see, I am showing you the patterns in different contexts and different variations. And in my personal experience, that is really what is key. A lot of traders struggle with price action patterns because they have only seen the textbook examples and obviously the market is not following your textbook rules. 
the market is very noisy it is messy there's a lot of volatility so in my experience when i've been trading or when i've helped and mentored other traders it is very important that we expose ourselves and pay attention to those patterns that are not textbook because that's really how the market is then later behaving and once we have seen the different variations and outcomes that will then help us for our pattern recognition and pattern trading as well so the first one is the head and shoulder and we're going to take a very different look a lot of people believe that the head and shoulder pattern is a very basic pattern that is not able to make money however the classic price action books Many of them agree that the head and shoulder together with the flag, which we are also going to cover, are the most profitable price action patterns there are. And I totally agree they are really, really powerful because the head and shoulder specifically has so much context into it. And I will show you how to use that. So what do we see here on our charts? At first, it looks quite messy. However, if we are just adding some tools and levels on top of what we are seeing here, we can make a lot more sense about it. And we have actually a head and shoulders. We have here the market is in an uptrend lately. We have a left shoulder, the head, which basically just means the market made a higher high. However, the really important piece to the puzzle comes here on the right side. From the head to the right shoulder, the market is making a lower high. This is key because in an uptrend, you don't see that. In an uptrend, you see the market make higher highs and higher lows. What we are seeing here, higher highs, higher lows. Once this pattern is broken, here you can see it. we are making lower highs. That is often where the market rolls over. You see lower lows and lower highs. Until this pattern is broken, you see higher lows and higher highs. The uptrend has started. So this little nuance, this little pattern alone is always worth keeping an eye on on your charts. So the head and shoulders is much more than just a head and two shoulders. The head and shoulders really tries to um, look at the dynamic of the wave rhythm. If the wave rhythm on an uptrend is broken and you see lower highs, that's a very, very meaningful signal, especially if we have more context. Like here we are turning, it seems like, at a previous resistance level. It is also the 192 round number, which is a very important round number. And so there is more than just a head and shoulder here. There's a head and shoulder with a lot of context. The previous high is here. We are coming from a previous strong uptrend and we are looking here at a potential um, exhaustion. Now, what are we gonna do with the head and shoulder? There are a few ways on how to trade that. In our mentoring group, we actually have a strategy where we trade the right shoulder with an early entry, but classically, uh, what you do is you wait for the market to clear the pattern and that's what I have referred to in the beginning as well. You want to make sure that you wait for the market to get out of such a pattern. So either you wait for the market to get out just above or below the trend line or you look for where is um, the last swing low. If the market breaks this low, what does it mean? It means that we are not only making lower highs, it also means that we are making lower lows at this point and this is a really important key. In an uptrend, that's the last thing you want to see. In a downtrend, that's a very important thing that you want to see. So a head and shoulders is, in this example, a trend reversal, where we may go from an uptrend to a downtrend. I have another example for you in a moment where a head and shoulder can also be a trend continuation. But for now, if the market clears this head and shoulder and breaks out below it, then we are looking at a potential downtrending start. And the cool thing about this is that we may then be able to get into a new downtrend very early on. And I've shown you in the beginning, there's not a lot of money to be made within the pattern, but as the market leaves the pattern, there's usually where you see the big flush of momentum. That's where the market moves a lot in a short amount of time. So here would be generally a potential entry trigger. The market is moving strongly. It is the lowest close that we've seen here on the right hand side. And you can see just within a few candles, the market moved quite a lot. And this is the interesting thing about a pattern. There is so much pressure building within those patterns that very often you'll see that once the market is actually exiting the pattern, all of this pressure is being released and the market moves a lot in a short amount of time. Here you are seeing another example of a head and shoulder. And this is not a textbook head and shoulder, but this is really 
in my experience, where pattern trading um, is a very important skill to learn once you get away from the textbook examples and once we look at the less than perfect examples. So what we have here, we have a strong move higher on the right hand side or on the left hand side. And then from the head to the right shoulder, we are already seeing here two right shoulders or two lower highs. Here's the ultimate high, obviously. Here we're having a lower high and here we're having another lower high. And here is our neckline. We always want to make sure that we have a neckline. A neckline is basically just a horizontal level. And as I said in the beginning, the horizontal level is quite important because the horizontal level helps us to define a breakout level. And with a good horizontal level that is being respected, um, a breakout is less subjective. And that's really where we want to be as a trader, as a technical trader. We want to take trades that are objective, that we can repeat many times and that there's not too much discretionary. There's already a lot of discretion as a price action trader, but we can implement certain tools like objective levels to help us bring a little bit more objectivity into our trading. Here you can see once the market gets below the level, this would be considered generally an entry. And again, the market has been trading sideways for a long time uh, that a lot of pressure has been building. Probably a lot of traders who have been long here then started taking exits, which is also contributing to more downside pressure. A lot of position building is going on. And then on the clearance of such patterns, that's usually or often where you see big, big pushes in a short amount of time. And you can see this also happened here. A very, very nice example. Here we are looking at a head and shoulder is a trade continuation um, or trend continuation pattern. So in this example, the head and shoulder may connect a downtrend here. Then the head and shoulder is our corrective phase. So it's a move or at least a consolidation in this ongoing downtrend. And then on the breakout, we may look at a continuation. So in this example, the pattern, the head and shoulder is a connector in a trend. And what does this continuation head and shoulder tell us? It tells us that the downtrend slowed down a little bit, which is natural. The market never moves in just one straight line, but there's always this ebb and flow, this back and forth. And this is what the head and shoulder shows us. It shows us that at this point, probably a lot of people who were short were taking profits, maybe partial profits. And then the bullish side, the bullish players maybe try to take over and push the price higher. However, it seems like there's not a lot of bullish pressure and the bulls are not very likely to succeed because you can see from the head to the right shoulder, we are making again a lower high. Whereas from the left shoulder to the head, we started making a higher high. Uh, we now broke this pattern and we are now making a lower high, which is um, not a very strong bullish signal. And especially in this context where we are already in a downtrending market, this is then making it very suspicious to look at as a continue or as a, a reversal pattern. Now, the final piece to the puzzle, obviously this is not enough. The final piece to the puzzle is then the clearance of the head and shoulder. If we see that the market is not only making a lower high, but also a lower low on the breakout out of this pattern, once we get below this level, we are seeing a lower low and a lower high. And this is then the continuation of the downtrend. That's what we need. You can see the market is broke breaking out. This is something that we're going to take a look at later. This is a little add on pattern. Um, I call this the lower bounce. People call it the breakout build up. And this is a very, very interesting pattern. It adds a lot of confluence because um, just to take a, or look ahead a little bit, it shows you that the market moved into the level, pulled back a little bit, but immediately the market or the bearers come back. There's an engulfing candle and broke below the level. We closing below all the previous lows. So very, very strong uh, signal. And then you can see all of this pressure that has been building here is released and the market in a short amount of time moved quite a bit. Again, such a nice example, the patterns or within the patterns, the market moves not much in a, sh in a long amount of time, but in those trending phases previously or after the exit of the pattern, that's where you really want to trade because the market moves a lot in a short amount of time. Next, our second pattern is the flag and together with the head and shoulders, those are among the most profitable patterns out there. And a flag is generally considered a continuation pattern. So it connects um, downtrending or uptrending phases within the overall long term up or downtrend. 
So what we see here is an initial strong push downwards, which signalizes that we are in a downtrend. Then the market enters a sideways phase. A flag can be parallel, so as I've shown you in the beginning, it can be just the channel sideways, or it can also look something like that. The lines are a little bit blurry. Are you gonna consider this a wedge or pennant or whatever? It doesn't really matter what label you put on it. It really, sh it only matters really what you see here. And this is the most or one of the more important takeaways of pattern trading. Don't worry about putting a label on it. Really try to understand what is happening here within the price action. And what do we see here? We are seeing the market moving strongly, very fast in a short amount of time. The market covers a lot of distance. And then the pattern shows us that the market is trying to move higher, but you can just see, look at the highs from here to here to here. In a long amount of time, the market is only able to go higher a little bit. So this is obviously not a very strong signal. This is a very weak sideways signal. So if you are, if you would be judging this, is this a strong bullish phase? And is it likely that the market is gonna reverse here? Probably not so much because we can see the market is not able to push higher a lot. Every time the market moves higher, there are sellers coming in and driving the price down. So in this context, it shows us that the market is not very strong on a bullish side. And on the breakout, this would then signal a continuation. What we see here, this would be the trigger, generally speaking, of a flag pattern. Once the market gets out of the flag, you can see we would be looking at a continuation. And this is exactly what happens. So the flag connects the downtrend with the uh, continuation downtrend. So flags are really interesting. And you can see we're on a five minute chart. They work across all the time frames. And later in our strategies, we're going to cover more examples. Here, another example. We are in a very strong uptrend. You can see that the market is moving higher, higher highs and higher lows. And then here we are moving lower for quite a while. And there is a very broad pattern. You can see the market is moving lower. We have a very nice defined range. And in this example, what you would generally be doing is wait for the market to clear the range. And obviously we wanna see the market break out higher. As long as you can see here is a major level, previous support, somewhere in this vicinity, there's a huge level. We can draw it here. You can see we're connecting the high with this range. Here's a uh, demand area. If you've watched my previous supply and demand videos, you will know about that. Here's then the support. So it makes sense to see the market pull back. Again, it's very important to understand that markets never move in just straight lines. There's always this back and forth. And this back and forth is often then, or we can understand it using our patterns. So what we see here is that the market uh, did make significantly lower highs, but on the lows, we are not really that low, or we are not able to move lower much. What this tells you is that each time the market moved down, there were bulls coming up and the market came back lower. And this time the market wasn't even able to move lower quite a bit. There were bulls coming up and the next time the bulls pushed it higher. So every time the market moved down, the bulls came in and pushed it higher and higher. And that is a very, very important market tell. And then on the exit out of the pattern, this is where the flag gets triggered and you can see there's a lot of bullish pressure being released and the continuation is taking place here. Next is a triangle and you, you may think that a triangle is similar to a flag, but there is one significant difference and it is the flat and the horizontal part. In a flag, you will only see that you are using trend lines or diagonal lines to define a flag. But in a triangle, you always have one straight or one horizontal um, side of the pattern. And what does this tell you? It tells you that the market was in an uptrend. It rolled over here with another pattern that we we'll cover later. Uh, it's, it's continued to make lower highs. And this pattern was never broken. You can see from the moment the market rolled over, we made a lower high and a lower high and a lower high. And the market keeps pushing into this low. Um, in contrast to the flag where we are actually making higher lows in this example, um, the triangle pattern is making equal lows. So the market still keeps pushing into the same low. It's a very, very strong bearish signal actually. It's strong on the upper side where the market keeps making lower highs, very strong bearish signal. And it's a very strong bearish signal here, whereas the market and the bulls are not able to make higher lows. 
the bulls are always being pushed back to the low point here. And it is just a matter of time before if the breakout happens, then the continuation takes place. So a triangle is usually considered a continuation. Like what you see here, you can see the market is breaking out of it. And the triangle is a very, very interesting um, pattern in general. Another example here, we are seeing the market has rolled over from a strong downtrend to here a strong uptrend. The uptrend came to a pause. And how does this pause look like? Again, on the downside order of this triangle, this is where it gets really interesting because the market still always made higher lows. This is a very bullish signal. So it can help us to remain bullish, at least for now, as long as this pattern is not broken. We see that the market, every time the market is pushing back into the level here, it's being resisted, but every time it moves lower, the bulls are coming in earlier and earlier and earlier. So really, really strong signal here. It's a great pattern. And again, on the breakout, you expect the market to really explode and then continue higher. So triangles with flags are exceptionally high probability price patterns to learn about. Next is the double or the triple top. And well, the name gives it a little bit away. So when we talk about a top, usually it means that the market may be turning or trends may be reversing. So let's take a look. What we have here is a strong uptrend. The market put in a high. And we have a double top here. The market has a resistance point here and another resistance point. However, the market keeps trading back into this zone. Of course, granted, the market could just turn higher and break out out of the pattern. Totally fine. Um, that is definitely a like uh, possibility. However, the good thing about pattern trading in general is that you have very well defined potential entry points. If the market breaks out to the upside, then you may consider a long. However, if the market continues and breaks to the downside, you may consider a short. You are not going to predict what may happen next as long as the market is in the pattern. So we are not going to trade just because we see a double top or just because we see a triangle. We're not automatically jumping into the market. We have to always wait for the price to really pick a direction and break out. So the point of the head and uh, of the double or triple top is the trading plan would be if the market breaks to the downside and we already see a very strong bearish uh, phase here on the break to the downside, we could initiate a short or wait for break and retest something that we see here. We see that the market is clearing the pattern. It is retesting into this zone and with a double or triple top, what is very common as I will show you later are so-called liquidity runs where if you are trading a double triple top, how are you going to approach it with a regular breakout approach? You may enter here on a breakout. Your stop loss is probably somewhere around here. And that is where you often see liquidity runs target. You can see the market is pushing back into the pattern. This is your liquidity run. And you can see as long as the market is not able to come higher and make uh, continue to make a lower high, this is still giving you a bearish bias. So now we are looking at a liquidity run and liquidity runs often foreshadow continuations to the downside. They are really trying to get your stop loss of those retail traders. And then you can see the market is really unfolding nicely. The liquidity run is one of the more interesting patterns that we can learn about later on. And I've included some strategies that we're going to take a look at later. Here we are looking at a double or triple bottom in the context of a downtrend. So we are coming from a downtrend. The market made a triple bottom. We have a very well defined range here. We have the lows here. We have the highs here. And here again, we have our lower bounce or the breakout buildup and the breakout happened here. So very strong signal. You could trade it as a breakout, a break and retest. And in general, double or triple bottoms, tops are reversal patterns. Here you can see that we have initial push. Some traders like to trade the initial breakout. Other traders wait for the market to come back here. Another option that I will show you later is to use additional confluence. So you may add a pivot point indicator. You can use Fibonacci. So what you do is you draw your Fibonacci from here to here. You get your extension probably around a 50%, 38% here. 
and you can use that as your confluence point and then look for those reversals here as well there are a few options and we're going to explore that later when we get into the actual strategies now let's take a look at the cup and handle and you will see why the cup and handle may be preferred over the little bit more subjective rounding top or rounding bottom so the cup and handle consists of usually a broad double top or, or double bottom in this case we're looking at a double bottom and this is the handle this is the more important part this is the breakout buildup or the lower bounce what you see is that the market push back into the level here into the high however we can compare last time the market was at this point the market sold off very long and strongly and it took a long time for the market to get back into the level this time things look very differently first of all we see a very strong push here very strong bullish move then the market hit the level and it came back immediately this time there were not a lot of sellers last time the sellers were able to push the price and hold the price down there all a long time whereas this time the sellers are only able to get the price uh, up to this point we're staying here above this area and this is how or why i call this a breakout buildup it is you can see that this is, there's a lot of steam and pressure probably building up uh, behind this move and if the market is really sticking to a particular level it already kind of foreshadows what may happen next obviously we still have to wait for the market to clear the pattern and really get out of the pattern however this is a, such a great add-on pattern and this is what makes this cup and handle such a beautiful pattern and you can see afterwards this is where the pressure is being released we have the actual breakout and there's no retest the market never looked back the market just broke out here we have another pattern um, would probably be considered a flag pattern and another push here higher here another example the market is coming from a downtrend the downtrend made higher low here then then we have a very well established resistance level we have a move here here from here to here the market sold off very long here we have a double bottom then the market came back to the level and this time the market was not able to sell off the, the sellers were not able to push the price down there were probably not many sellers left and the buyers kept the price up here in a very tight where um, narrow range this is our uh, handle this is the broad cup this is our handle the handle is then our breakout buildup and on the breakout you can see again the market never looked back it just kept grinding higher and higher so the buildup or the handle this is where you see this pressure slowly building and it is often then followed by a strong trend continuation or in this case a complete reversal from a downtrend in the pattern to an uptrend next is the pennant and the pennant is probably something in between a flag a wedge and maybe even a triangle so what do we have we have an uptrend and then we have a lower high area here and a higher low area here so the market is moving into the top of this pennant and what you will often see is that as the market moves into the pennant obviously the range of the price action becomes smaller and smaller because the room just between those lines uh, within the pennant are just becoming narrow and narrow and very often you will see then by the end um, when the price action and the pennant is getting very small that is often where you see then the breakout happening and this is what happens here the market is really moving into this tight corridor this is what we would refer to as a spring pattern so a spring pattern is a failed breakout the market is moving lower try to clear the lower end and within the same candle that's the key we are not seeing a close outside of the pattern the same candle here sees a push back into the pennant and then the next candle is already here the breakout so the spring pattern adds a lot of context and it's a lot of meaning although it's just a single candlestick wick it adds a lot of context to this here and then if you remember we're coming from an uptrend then this pennant is becoming a consolidate or a continuation pattern where we are just moving sideways for a little bit and then the breakout leads to another push higher here the, pa the pennant is also taking place in an uptrending scenario we are making higher highs we are making then lower highs however on the downside we are still continuing to make lower um, higher lows so 
this pattern within the down within the uptrend is not broken the higher lows um, aspect is not changed so we're still making higher lows you can see we are making a low here a higher low a higher low higher low higher low again we have the spring pattern here the market tried to push out within the same candle the market reversed closed inside of the pennant then you can see we are back above at very close to the top of this um, trend line and then here we have this in this case we have a very nice uh, liquidity run the market breaks out retests here the demand area and then you can see the market afterwards rallied higher so of course sometimes you may take the initial breakout and those things then may take you out and that's totally fine nothing works 100 percent and that is very important to understand and to accept okay my initial breakout didn't work out probably my stop loss was triggered but now it seems like there is a second opportunity the second opportunity is here because we have a liquidity run it is a strong signal that the market fished for the stops then turned around closed higher this candle here is the highest close that we're seeing we're completely breaking even below the highest point out of the complete uptrend that we have seen previously and so this is a lot of context so again close and cut the trade the first trade if you see that your tr stop loss is triggered wait for the next signal and then you can really capitalize and really make up for it the worst thing you can do as a trader is hold on to a losing trade and just pray that it will turn around this is not how trading works you get out when you're proven wrong the breakout obviously didn't work now uh, you don't want to hang on to this trade and see the market reverse and then a small loss turns into huge loss because that is very hard to recover from whereas if you are able to close the first loss for a small or regular loss then you get back in when the next signal presents itself and then you can see the winning trade is easily able to take care of the previous loss and this is where you want to be the winners take care of the losses the losses are small normal sized and the winners are larger than your losses that's one of the more take uh, important takeaway points as well let's talk about the concept of fractal patterns and every video that i make on youtube there are always people asking what is the time frame we should use what is the best time frame and the thing is that a marker is fractal and uh, this means that whatever you see on the higher time frame for example on the monthly the weekly the daily is gonna show up in almost identical ways on the lower time frames so the patterns you see on the higher time frames are patterns you will see on the lower time frames. So what do we see here is we see here a head and shoulder. You can see we're having a higher highs. Then here's the head, lower highs. This is the head and shoulder. And this is the daily time frame. So, and when we look at, for example, the high points here, we, let's take a look, for example, at maybe this point here uh, on a lower time frame. How does this look on a lower time frame? so those are now the one hour chart and those are the patterns and this is what i refer to first and when we zoom in here what do we see we see that the market is giving us a triple top so you can see on the 30 minute a pattern that you will see on the daily as well you'll see break and retests on the 30 minute you see liquidity runs you see triangles here on the daily time frame we have a broad um, pennant then we have a breakout of the pennant, the retest on the daily time frame of the pennant on the two hour lower time frame looks like a triangle pattern. And then we can even go to a lower time frame looking at this now on the two hour, whereas we're coming from the daily time frame on the two hour, this looks like a megaphone pattern. So the most important thing to remember is when we look at uh, the time frames and when you ask yourself the time frame question what is the best the optimal time frame it that it doesn't matter the time frame question only matters within your personal profile and for me for example the right time frame may be the one hour or the four hour whereas for a day trader the right answer would be the five minute or the 15 minute and both can be traded profitably obviously there's no reason why you cannot trade one hour profitably there's no reason why you can only trade a five minute profitably every time frame can be traded profitably and there is no right or wrong time frame in general it really comes down to your own personal profile 
it comes down to what are your what is your risk profile do you like to hold trades over the weekend do you like to be flat at the end of the day uh, how long can you stay in trades do you have a problem holding on to trades and those are the questions you need to answer yourself you don't need to ask what is the best time frame because this answer is different for everyone and the good thing about the markets being fractal is really that the pattern you see on the higher time frame a head and shoulder will show up in a very similar way on the lower time frame as well so don't worry about what time frame you want to trade or what other people recommend look at and ask yourself what is the right time frame for you for example we can take a look at a engulfing reversal what does it mean on the higher time frame you can see we are looking at an engulfing candle this is the daily time frame when we go to the one hour time frame the engulfing candle looks like this suddenly it becomes a triple top with a break and retest pattern and so you can see whatever you see on higher time frame is repeated on the lower time frame a shooting star on the four hour time frame a three candle pattern on the lower time frame looks like a wedge pattern now it looks like a head and shoulders pattern and a continuation happens a pullback pin bar on the four hour time frame we have here a pattern a break and a retest and this little area on the lower time frame looks like a flag pattern so 30 minute four hour continuation and so it's very important to understand that there's no right or wrong better or worse time frame it only comes down to your personal preferences so don't worry about what is the best time frame patterns will show up on every time frame whether it's the one hour whether it's the four hour the 15 minute five minute daily weekly monthly you will be able to find patterns across all the time frames and whatever you are reading uh, somewhere on the internet or in books that one trading time frame is better than the other that's not true it may be better for a specific trader because of the personal requirements the skills the character traits the risk profile but there is no better or worse time frame when it comes to performance now let's take a look at actual ready to use pattern strategies and i have included six for you first of all we are looking at a liquidity run which is preceded by a breakout so what we have here is a very strong head and shoulder we're coming from an uptrend this is i've talked about this in the past this is called a void um, since this is a forex chart and in fx we don't have intraday gaps or intra week uh, gaps this is the closest thing in forex that we'll get to a gap so we're calling this a void in a short amount of time the market just shot higher there was only um, buying pressure here there was no selling interest so the market just without any problem moved higher it entered into here the head and shoulder pattern we have to break out and imagine and or just um, ask yourself how do breakout traders approached it you may get in here or here and your stop loss is here the market moves in your favor what are breakout traders going to do at the first possible um, opportunity they move their stop loss to break even so their stop loss is then suddenly here or here and what is a liquidity run trying to do a liquidity run is trying to hunt your stop it is not your broker hunting your stop brokers generally couldn't care less about your stop but if you have a liquidity run that is the other traders hunting manipulating the market to get to your stop because it's freeing up liquidity and if everybody's on the same side of the trade that's usually not a good sign so what you want to see is that some traders get taken out liquidity is freed up and then you can see here we are having an engulfing liquidity run so this engulfing candle is a liquidity run we can now go from the one hour even to the 15 minute if you want to have a, a multi time frame approach on the one hour you can see now this is looking more or less like a uh, flag pattern and what we can do is just wait for the breakout and you can see we have a continuation so the idea is that we're starting on the higher time frame we have our pattern we have the first breakout we wait for the retest with a liquidity run we go to the lower time frame we see do we have a pattern yes or no in this case we do have a pattern so we can use that and then on the breakout we are looking for a continuation of the downtrend that has already started um, very often when you have those voids on your charts they make for very good targets because there is very little that can stop the price from moving lower so what happens is often that you are going to target the beginning of the void which is here this is where the market really shot higher um, so this is where you could have targeted then the entry or the exit 
Here we have another example of a liquidity run. You are looking at an uptrend. We have a double top more or less. You could also say maybe a cup and handle. Here is your build uh, breakout build up. The market is really sticking to this area here before the breakout. We have the breakout. What happens? People are then sitting on a little bit of profit as the market moves lower or at least the breakout traders are sitting on profits. What they are going to do? They are going to move their stop loss somewhere to break even around here. Then the liquidity run is coming. We can add maybe even a 50 period moving average. They're very, very well respected um, during pullbacks and liquidity runs. We can then um, here move in and you can see this is a three candle shooting star reversal. And since the market is fractal, what does this look on the lower time frame? It looks like a head and shoulder on a five minute. So we go from the one hour where we are at this point in time, we are looking at a retest and the higher time frame gives us the trading plan that we want to look for a, a short here because this is a perfect place to look for a short and we can go to all the way to the five minute to time our entry more aggressively. So on the low on the five minute time frame, we are now looking at a head and shoulder, left shoulder, head, right shoulder. We have our neckline here and we have the 50 period moving average that we can use as well. We wait for the market to get back below the uh, head and shoulder, below the um, 50 period moving average. And then you can see this is where the market really uh, moved to the downside. So this is also a very nice way of how we can integrate higher and lower time frames. The higher time frame gives us the direction. It gives us the idea of where to look for a trade at the liquidity run area. We want to go short and then the lower time frame really helps us to uh, sniper our entry if you want to go with this term. Here another example, the market is coming from an uptrend. Here we are having a um, stranger pattern. Not sure if we can put a specific label on it. You can see we are having um, here the highs, we have a higher high, then we're starting to make lower highs. Here we have a breakout buildup. The market has a good support level here, which is breaking, it's retesting, retesting the 50 as well. Here you can see when we wait a little bit, we can get a pattern actually. So now we have a good support level. We see that this level is holding. So the market is trading below the resistance and above the support now. So we obviously want to make sure that we are not trading inside a pattern and we want to make sure we get out, out of the pattern. So we want to see the market clear this area. And then you can see we're looking at a very nice continuation. There was some liquidity runs here as well. We have a breakout buildup before the breakout. So you can see how this all very, very nicely fits together here. Now let's talk about a spring spike. And what does this mean? So we are using a Bollinger Band and this is the higher time frame Bollinger Band. You can see this is the blue line here. And what you want to see is that the market spikes into a Bollinger Band and then reverses, spikes into it and reverses. Whenever you see this, this is a very, very strong momentum signal. I once had lunch in Singapore with a hedge fund trader and uh, we were talking about strategies and trading. And he said that in the hedge fund where he was working it, the only thing that he was trading was a Bollinger Band reversal. So I found this very intriguing. I went back to look at how well they work and surprisingly, actually Bollinger Band spikes and reversals work quite well, especially in such a a multi time frame concept. So we're using the Bollinger Band from the higher time frame from the one hour on the actual. This is the five minute time frame. We want to see the market spike in such a Bollinger Band. Then we want to look for a pattern. We can even add the RSI here and look for a divergence. And now you can also see here's a previous resistance area. So there's a lot of things coming together. We have a previous resistance area. We have a spike here. We have a pattern. We have a divergence here. And all we need now is breakout out of this zone. And then the Bollinger Band spike would have signaled here the exhaustion. And you can see this is what happens. We have a very, very nice, well-defined range here, good trend line, nice breakout. And then the market really collapsed. And all of this pressure that built up here is then released. Here, another example. And this is very important. Sometimes the market will spike out of the Bollinger Band and keep grinding higher. It did it here as well. The important thing about such an approach is that you always want to make sure you wait for a pattern to emerge. Just because the market is outside of your Bollinger Bands, um, that's not good enough. This is not a strong enough signal. You want to have multiple layers of confluence. So multiple um, 
things that you can stack on top of each other. So for example, here, what do we have? We have a, a, a flag pattern or a pennant or a wedge, whatever you want to call it. And then you would wait for a breakout here as well. We have the market trade outside of the Bollinger Bands for a long time. Then at this point only, this is where we get our first divergence, whereas the price previously and the, uh, the RSI kept making higher highs. Here is now where the RSI for the first time made lower highs. So we have a divergence. We are back inside of the Bollinger Band now. We can then add our horizontal level. So now you can see we are able to put the price inside a pattern whereas this was not possible previously. So there was not even a way to get into a breakout area because we were not able to define a breakout level. So now we have uh, a pattern, we have a divergence, we are trading outside of the Bollinger Bands, now we are back inside of it. So again, we have multiple confluence factors and then the breakout, you can see how strong the breakout is. There was a little tiny buildup and then this is where all this pressure is being released and the market moved lower. So very, very interesting thing of how, how you can combine an indicator or maybe even two indicators with pattern trading and different concepts. Now let's take a look at a strategy using a support and resistance bounce concept. So what do we do is we look on the markets for strong support and resistance levels. Ideally, you want to find them on the higher time frame. Here we are right now on the one day on the daily time frame. And we can identify a very strong level. We have a previous resistance that turns here into a flip zone. Here we have a, a low and then here also a swing point. So clearly the market is trading at a very important level right now. Now we can go to the five minute. This is, you can see now we are having a strong bullish candle and this is how it looks on the five minute time frame at the exact point of this higher time frame. So on the higher time frame, what we see is a strong um, uptrend the market is going higher. So we have to wait a little bit for a pattern to emerge. Ideally, you would like to see a consolidation. So the market moved higher. Now we are looking at a potential rectangle pattern. You can see when we zoom in, we are seeing here maybe a triangle. You could even call it maybe a cup and handle. So we have a strong resistance level here at the top. And then here on the right side, this is the key. We are seeing higher lows. So we can see how the market is already building a lot of pressure here before the actual breakout. So we have this resistance level that is stretching here all the way. Now we have first the double bottom where the market was not able to push lower anymore. Then we have the higher low and then we have the continuation. So this is what happens afterwards. And we can even see after the first initial push, the market gave us a second flag pattern. We have our flag here with a trend line and we could have also drawn a, uh, a trend line here to complete a flag pattern. And then on the breakout, the market is then pushing higher again. So you can see how very nicely we start on the higher time frame, where the point is really to identify where we want to trade. We want to trade at market or at levels that have previously led to a strong reaction. And once we know where we want to trade, we know the direction long. Then we go to the lower time frame to really sniper our entry. We look for patterns. We can use breakouts. We can use retests. Here we have a liquidity run. And then this is how we can integrate higher lower time frames and different concepts of pattern trading. Vergences are very powerful. Um, I've previously talked about them obviously in this video as a just a small add on and in this strategy here they're going to take a little bit more of a of a front seat so we are looking at a one hour chart and we are looking at a downtrend and what do we have here is a divergence as the downtrend moves lower and what a divergence tells you is that what you're seeing here as a downtrend is losing momentum so the downtrend is not as strong as it used to be this is what the divergence is telling you Whereas on the price chart, you can see we have a lower low, a lower low, a lower low. The indicator already tells you that although there is a lower low, the market is not strong anymore, not as strong as it used to be. You can see we have suddenly a longer consolidation phase. The market is not pushing that low anymore compared to here. We don't see this huge momentum anymore that we have seen here. And this is what the divergence is telling us. We are then also seeing that the market is making a double bottom. So we can also put here um, a trend line on this market. So we can very nicely see that this downtrend, whatever has happened here, 
is now seemingly likely to be over. We don't know yet until the market is actually breaking out of the pattern, but everything is pointing towards this downtrend to be rolling over into an uptrend. And then how do we define a breakout? We use the trend line. And then we also wanna see ideally the market move into a higher high. Here's a high, here's a high. So you wanna make sure the market is clearing the high and actually moving out of the pattern. So you can see when we zoom in, here is a level and you wanna see really the market push into the level. And a trading plan could be a break and a retest, a break and a retest. So now we are on the lower time frame, and this is really where you can then look for trading entries. Those are the levels that we got here. And to complete the trade, you want to see a break and retest. So we have a breakout and now we could wait for a retest. In this case, there was no retest at the first level. So now we are already at the second level. And if you didn't take the breakout, you have to wait. This is the nature of pullback trading. This is something that many traders struggle with. If you are a retest or a pullback trader, not always will there be a pullback, obviously. Sometimes there will be a breakout and the market will never look back. And in this case, a retest trader really has to learn how to sit on their hands because there's just nothing you can do about it. You just have to wait for the next opportunity. The next opportunity may come now as the market moved higher. Now we are looking at a retest area here, a little bit of a deeper retest. Now we have a great pattern here. We're making higher lows. Now we have the breakout here. Now, if two candles later, we have a retest. So you can see sometimes it does take a while. Sometimes you have to wait for the next trade. And now you can see things look very differently. Now we have a double top, maybe even here a lower bounce with a cup and handle. We are making higher lows. And then this is how you could have then seen or traded your retest. So very, very important if you realize or if you want to be a pullback trader, it's one of the more important things that you have to uh, really internalize that there's not always going to be a pullback. And if there is not a pullback, you don't chase the market. You just wait for the next opportunity. There may come a next opportunity within the same chart, within the next setup, or you have to wait a little bit longer for a new opportunity completely. But you're not going to chase the market and you just have to understand that this is not your edge and you have to wait for a pullback. Now we are taking a look at a multi time frame moving average flag system. So what we have here is a five minute time frame. And again, what we are looking at is a continuation here within a flag or maybe even we can call it a a uh, cup and handle, maybe even a triangle. So there are many ways what we can do. It doesn't matter again what label we have. It just matters what they're telling us. Similar here. And what we can sometimes do is add a moving average on our charts. I love to use the 50 period SMA. And what you will often see is that those um, sideways phases, what happens is that in the initial trend, the market moves away from the moving average and then those uh, consolidations move back into the moving average. So like here, the market is moving away from the moving average as the trend accelerates. Then you can see the market and the consolidation is taking place at the moving average. And this is where you then want to look for um, opportunities. This is ideally where you like to see um, patterns occur. You can see here's the moving average. This is now where we have a pattern. And the continuation here with this flag pattern happened right at the moving average. So a beautiful example and the moving average can just help you add another layer of objectivity to your charts. A moving average is very objective. There's no question about where the moving average is. It's 100% clear. So it can help us to just bring more objectivity into the otherwise so um, subjective uh, nature of price action trading. Another example. We are in a downtrend. We are very far away from the moving average. Now you can see we are back at the moving average. What else do we have? We have a pattern. We have a double bottom. Now you can see we have a triple bottom. Now we even have a head and shoulder. So we have a left shoulder, the head, the right shoulder. And then on the break and the retest, that's where we see the continuation. And again, it happens at the moving average. So the moving average can help you not only to have more objectivity in your trading, it can also help you to stay more patient. A lot of traders, when they see something like that, the market is very strongly trending, they get 
too excited and they cannot wait. They see, they see how much money they could have made. They hope that the market will just continue and they will jump on it. However, the moving average can help you to understand now the market is really, really overextended. It's very, very oversold. And you don't want to get in now because the market is overheated. You want to trade when the market is at a reasonable spot. And it is reasonable when the market is close to the moving average because as the name suggests, it's the average price. You want to get into the market for previously historic average prices. If the market like here is very far away, it is much, much lower. Now it is way too cheap and it's, uh, it's way too overextended. It's too far away from the average. And then what has to happen is that eventually the market has to resume to the average. It's just what happens all the time. The market will always come back to its moving average. So it can help you to just understand, OK, this time when the market is far away from the moving average, I am not ready to trade. I shouldn't be trading. It is not a reasonable price to trade. But if I just wait a little bit longer, my chance may come back and I may find a better price. Um, for getting into a trade. And that's it for my chart pattern trading course here on YouTube. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. You got something out of it. If you did, leave a comment below. Let me know what you learned, what you find the most interesting, what you want me to do more videos on. I'm reading all the comments. I cannot always reply to them, but I can read and I can show you that I always read every single comment. So make sure to leave a comment below. I look forward to hearing from you and then you will see more from me in one of my next videos.